Today we're looking at our second brain body loop to help us understand how to become smarter for becoming stronger. In our prior videos, we've talked about how becoming stronger can lower our overall body threat. Whenever we lower our overall body threat, we can get out of pain and we can perform better. Now, from there, we said, hey, we have three primary brain loops that are involved in helping us become stronger. And by understanding these, we can understand better how to modify our current approach to training in order to achieve better results. So our first loop that we talked about, we mentioned this idea of neural drive, that my frontal lobe has to go through my spinal, send a signal through my spinal cord to talk to the muscles of the body in order to get them to contract hard and create tension. So that was loop number one. Today we're talking about loop number two, which is one that I find super interesting and super important. So once again, I'm gonna start off by drawing my, uh, my goofy brain. Today though, I'm gonna add in a little section down here, that little colored in spot right there. We're gonna call that the cerebellum, which is a little brain that sits at the back of the big brain. And we're gonna put the spinal cord in. And once again, I will go with my award-winning hand. All right, now, Here's the deal. Our second brain body loop is not about neural drive, it is about coordination. It's really tough to be strong if you're not coordinated, all right? And this is gonna be very important going forward, once again, because we're trying to get smarter about, hey, how do I change or alter what I'm doing in the gym or not doing in the gym in order to get better performance out of my body? So, we are talking about a coordination loop. Now, in previous ZL videos, we've talked about what we call Neuro 101. And it's this idea that, there, that our, the human nervous system, which is in control of everything, works in feedback loops, what are called feed forward and feedback loops. Now, I'm gonna give you a very simple uh, approach here. So if I wanna say, hey, I wanna open and close my hand really quickly, that requires a little bit of coordination. So the way that that is gonna work, the initial command to make the hand open and close quickly is gonna originate um, in what's called the motor cortex, motor being movement. The motor cortex is gonna send a signal, like we talked about in the neural drive video, that's going to go down through the spinal cord. It's then gonna go out to the muscle fibers in the hand to cause them to contract and then relax um, in succession. So that's the coordination aspect. Now, here's what's really interesting. Whenever we send that initial signal, starting uh, down to the muscle fibers, another signal also originates at basically the same time. Now, this is where it gets a little complicated, so you might want to draw this out with me. The second signal is actually going to go through what's called the pons, and also this thing in your brain called the olive, and that signal is actually going to go to the cerebellum. And it's going to tell the cerebellum what's about to happen. Now, what's fascinating to me about this is, so I've got loop one, loop two. So the blue is the imagined movement, or the planned movement. The red is the actual movement. Now we're going to go, uh, I'm kind of out of colors here, so I'm going to just use the red. I'm going to keep going with the red. So as I send my, my signal to my hand to, to contract, the hand is going to start contracting, but it's also going to now make a loop, and it's going to send signals back up to the cerebellum. Now what the cerebellum is going to do, the cerebellum is going to compare what's actually happening with what was planned. And if there's a problem, so let's say I told my hand, hey hand, I want you to open and close quickly, make sure that the thumb is involved. That's what my frontal lobe is telling my hand to do. But instead I do this. My cerebellum will recognize and understand that the thumb is not involved. It will then send a signal, so we'll go back to our blue. It's gonna now send a signal back up to the frontal lobe to say, hey, the thumb's not involved. Send some more signals to the thumb. Now, this is the basics of motor coordination. Now, why this is super important to us, if you remember we talked about four primary factors when it comes to building strength. We talked about creating force, which is the neural drive, that's the tension aspect. We talked about endurance, how long do I have to create the contractions, the speed of the contractions, but I also mentioned the vector or angle. The vector or angle is really about coordination. So whenever we look at our traditional forms of strength training, if I go into a gym and I'm doing a bench press or an overhead press or a deadlift or a squat or whatever, while they are complicated movements, 
they are uh, how they are a little bit more simple than maybe making a circle. Does that make sense to everybody? If so if you can think about it from that perspective, what we can do is we can begin to gauge the coordination challenge of strength work based off how challenging this loop is. Now, once again, your brain is so smart, we keep talking about this idea of the set principle, which is we're going to get better at exactly what we practice. So if you've been doing the same forms and same types of exercises for 20 years, you're probably really, really good at them. But if you have pain that has never healed, if you've plateaued in your performance, one of the questions is, is one of your threats maybe a lack of coordination? Meaning, do you need greater or different types of strength challenges in order to improve the activity of this brain-body loop? So this is the second of our brain-body loops that we wanted to discuss to help us become smarter about becoming stronger. In our final video, what we're going to discuss is one additional brain-body loop that is highly neglected but absolutely vital to become stronger and get the great benefits of decreased pain and improved performance. What made it start? And you can see that I very, very carefully scribbled in some circles. And guess what I'm going to do from here? I'm just going to hang out. Oh, that was way better. <laughs> That's so true.